In 1976, Boy was born and he quickly showed to have great ability on the ball and started playing as a defender, slowly progressing forward on the pitch. And in this video I will show you how he went on to become one of the purest old school natural goal scorers of the last 20 years. Welcome to the life of Hood van Nistelrooy. After bouncing around from club to club at youth level, he would settle for a while at Den Bosch, where he would get his first professional debut and show that he had some talent for getting the ball in the net, averaging around a goal every three matches in his last season, which is fairly decent considering he was only 21 years old, but nothing outstanding and you might think that as he transferred to Heerenveen, he would become much more prolific, but no, still around the same level. You might question how good he could have possibly been back then, taking into account his numbers which are just not up to the standard he would have eventually set for himself, and after some research the most I can tell you is that he was actually being used in a more loose roll up front, not as focused in goal scoring as you would expect from him. But then, of course, everything changed as he joined PSV, paying 6.8 million for him in 1998, which just shows how much they valued him already, as he finally got to play in the role which suited him the most, his numbers skyrocketed. 42 goals in 46 matches, 31 of those in the league getting him a second place finish in the Golden Boot, getting his first ever Champions League hat-trick and winning Dutch Player of the Year. After another season pulling similar numbers and averaging around one goal per game played, Van Nistelrooy got noticed by a player that took trials at Irvine, with a particularly familiar family name. His name you ask? Darren Ferguson. Of course we're talking about no other than Sir Alex Ferguson's son, who would quickly tell his father to sign the striker. The following match day, a team of Manchester United representatives arrived at the PSV stadium, and the rest was history. 18.5 million pounds and Van Nistelrooy packed his bags to Old Trafford, except not so fast. The day it was supposed to be announced turned instead into an announcement that the transfer had been cancelled, as United were concerned about the health of his knee ligaments and wanted further medical testing before signing him. PSV refused. The next day, in his first training session after the injury, Van Nistelrooy's knee gave in, rupturing his ACL and leaving him on the sidelines for a whole year. Somehow, as he came back from injury, he was still able to convince Manchester United to give him another shot at a medical test, and by some miracle, he passed, one year after the first one, and that his transfer completed. He clearly wanted to show what he was capable of, as he would debut against Liverpool in the Charity Shield and get a goal despite the loss, and then score twice in his debut in the Premier League. By the end of the season, he was undoubtedly considered one of the best strikers in the world, becoming only the third man in the last 25 years to score 10 goals in a single Champions League campaign, scoring against every team he faced in the final stages, despite being knocked out in the semi-final on away goals. He would also tie the records for most consecutive games scored in the Premier League, also just one match short of tying Luis Aragonés for the record of most consecutive matches scored in the Champions League. There were other highlights to the season, such as him coming on to score twice in three minutes and saving Man United from getting knocked out of the League Cup, or his first Premier League hat-trick, but what matters the most is that despite not winning a single trophy, he would win PFA Player of the Season. The following season would only get better, like insanely better. That year, in the Champions League, he took part in the playoffs, playing two legs and getting two goals. Then, he would take part in nine matches up to the quarterfinals, where they would get knocked out by Real Madrid, as iconically, Ronaldo Phenomenus scored a hat trick in Old Trafford. What people forget is that Vani Salroy scored two himself. And that season, he had scored in every Champions League match he played in, breaking the record for most consecutive matches scored in, totaling 12 goals in the final stages. Only José Altafini in 1962 had ever scored more. That's only two goals less than Lionel Messi's best season despite playing 207 minutes less. So every once in a while as I make these videos I find something so impressive that is worth going on a tangent for and this is certainly the case. 
Vanessa Roy scored the goal every 56 minutes that season. No 21st century player has ever to this day had a better goal scoring frequency. The closest was Cristiano Ronaldo in 2013 2014, where he managed one every 58 minutes. Although Ronaldo faced much tougher competition, it's still impressive and just goes to show how much Van Nistelrooy deserved more than a quarter final exit that year. One comparison that I find earth shattering is that in Messi's best ever season, he got a goal every 70 minutes. That's 25% worse. Van Nistelrooy, despite only playing the full 94 times that year, was just two goals short of outscoring the entire UCL career of Ronaldo Fenomeno. Even if you count the European Champions Cup, only three players have ever managed better. Puskas, Jared Muller and Sulcer. So yeah, what the hell. Still, that season he once again finished as top scorer of the Premier League, won the competition and was Premier League player of the season. Between these two seasons he also managed to go on a 10 match goal scoring streak in the Premier League, a record that stood for 11 years. The 2003-2004 season's highlight would probably be his heroics in the FA Cup, scoring a brace in each of his last three appearances, including the final to take the trophy to Old Trafford. The next season, he would miss a lot of matches due to injury, still he would be in great form during the Champions League group stage, scoring in every match except for one, totaling 8 goals in 4 matches and still finishing as the tournament's top scorer. He also scored the opener as United became the first team to beat Arsenal's Invincibles after 49 matches. In his final season at United, all hell broke loose. He allegedly started becoming very envious of the attention a young Cristiano Ronaldo was getting and started becoming increasingly aggressive towards the 20 year old, to the point where Sir Alex was forced to punish him and bench him for several games. It would all become much worse though as he would get pissed off at Ronaldo in training and telling him to go crying to his daddy, allegedly referring to second coach Carlos Queiroz. Regardless, Cristiano Ronaldo would break down crying as he would take it literally and be very hurt as his dad had just passed away at a young age. After this, it just was time to move away and Van Roy would join Real Madrid as he watched Cristiano lead Manchester to Spain winning the league and tying Hugo Sanchez for the most consecutive matches scored in La Liga. During his second season he had to get surgery and well, for a while everything seemed fine, he kept scoring a ridiculous amount of goals and honestly, even as Real announced that he had to get another surgery and would need 9 months to recover, he seemed to still be able to have an impact but the day he came back, he entered the pitch to substitute none other than Cristiano Ronaldo who now had also moved to Real Madrid and as he managed to score a goal, he would rip his tie in that same strike. Real now had a younger better goal scorer. Why would they bet their ships on Van Nistelrooy? Well, they had no reason to, and he was sold to Hamburg. He would never again have a proper full season between injuries and lack of motivation. He never played up to his standard. Eventually, he was so close to a shock transfer back season. If you're wondering why I didn't mention his work with the Dutch national team so far, well, he only played three tournaments, only getting more than two goals in the Euro 2004 where coincidentally, the Netherlands got knocked out by a young Cristiano Ronaldo who scored and assisted to take Portugal to the final. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering how he got knocked out of his only ever World Cup, well, it was Portugal again. For some reason, Ronaldo was always there, can't blame Van Nistelrooy for hating the guy a little bit. The thing is, he doesn't. In several interviews he has claimed to have a really great relationship with him, developing it in, in Real Madrid, admiring him for his hard work, perseverance and determination to become the best and even saying that he's a really funny guy, always great to see two of the greatest getting along so well. Van Nistelrooy took the old school striker role and made it work in the modern day and oh boy did it work, he was deadly, ferocious in front of goal, he struck fear in every goalkeeper, he was just at another level. His Champions League record is simply crazy, definitely the competition's best player to have never won it, it's simple, as a goal scorer, there weren't many better. So, getting into our ranking system, when it comes to finishing it's undoubtedly a 10 out of 10 of course, 
then is positioning. This man was always at the right place at the right time, once again a 10 out of 10. For speed and physicality, it was a great mix of fast and strong, but didn't exactly excel at either. It's an 8 out of 10. Also, his first touch and ball control, it wasn't the best technically, but this category also applies to just getting the first touch to get away from the defender when we're talking about strikers. And Van Nistelrooy was great at that, so a 7 out of 10. Then his mentality, he was clearly a bit problematic, so that hurts him a bit, but he was so smart, his off the ball movement was incredible, a true predator. It's a 9 out of 10. Now his legacy, first consistency, he was able to be himself anywhere, always great at scoring, but it only got him a certain place as he never managed an international trophy, it's a 9 out of 10. Secondly, Flair, he will be hard pressed to even find clips of him dribbling, this man really was all about the goals, and as much as some were beautiful, he didn't strive much for aesthetics, it's a 4 out of 10. Then is Trophy Cabinet, no international trophy or Ballon d'Or, not even a top 5 finish, it's a 4 out of 10. Longevity is also not looking too good, about 5 to 7 years at the top, it's a 5 out of 10. Then the Icon Factor, he was never one of those worldwide famous names, but I feel like he made such a deep connection between his name and goal scoring that he will probably last long, it's a 7 out of 10. That totals out to 73 out of 100, which just comes to show how much we value aesthetics in football. Sometimes it isn't just about getting the job done, or is it? I don't know. Actually, I'd like to hear your opinion, so comment down below what you think. Me, I personally love Van Roy. I love great goal scorers, I really admire their... The way they just are always at the right place at the right time. I really find it fascinating. So yeah, this was Vanny Salroy's career in a video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe. See you next week. Bye.